Well, hey everyone, it's been a minute. Sorry about that. Um, I feel like my content has been like all over the place lately, so sorry about that. Um, I had myself on like a really good schedule for a while and then things kind of like fell apart a bit. I kind of needed a break from stuff, but I'm kind of slowly getting back into having somewhat of a schedule for stuff, but I'm also kind of thinking that I don't want to have a schedule anymore but you should be seeing stuff from me more regularly again now. Um, we'll see how long that lasts, but yeah, everything's fine. I just needed a bit of a break from things, but um, yeah. So uh, let's see, where are we? Um, I wanted to talk about my Portland trip. I've been back for a week. <laughs> I meant to uh, tell you guys about it earlier, but I just got caught up in things and then I was really tired after my trip in a good way. Um, and I just didn't get around to uh, talking about it, but we'll talk about that today. But first, um, I just wanted to talk about something that happened tonight since it's on my mind and I'll get it out of the way first. Um, so it's a Wednesday night tonight. Um, I never have super high expectations for a Wednesday night because it's, who's gonna come to a strip club on Wednesday, right? Well, some people do, obviously. Um, there was this woman who came in and she was like obnoxious and everyone who like all the dancers were like oh my god i'm glad she's gone when she finally left um and it's always like interesting when a woman comes in because they just have a different vibe usually um than guys do so sometimes it's nice when a woman comes in i think she was by herself too she was talking to a guy there but i, w I wasn't sure if they were like they were together i don't know but she's kind of hanging out by herself, right? So my experience was I was up on stage, and I was dancing, you know, and then she comes up and tips me a couple times. Cool. Um, and then as I'm getting, getting off stage, she comes up to me and says, hey, can I come, can I talk to you after you get, after you get dressed? I'm like, okay, sure. Um, and that's, that's, that's a good thing. Like, I wish more people would do that. So I know that they want to talk to me. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's, it's a customer. I don't care that it's a woman, whatever. Um, and my, I don't know, I'm assuming that she wants to ask me about like, where I learn pole stuff. I don't know. That's just my first impression. Like, she seemed really like impressed. And I, I was assuming she wanted to know like, where did I learn to dance? Or where did I learn how to do the stuff that I did on stage, right? And then I go and I get dressed and I go and get a drink of water then I come down and sit next to her. And she doesn't really seem to have, like, I thought she had something to ask me, but she, I guess she just wanted to like sit and chat. And I'm like, okay, well, this is part of my job. So I'll sit and, and talk with you. But then she like proceeds to like critique my dancing. And I'm just like, like, I didn't ask you for advice. You know, like, and I don't want to at all sound like I'm not open to criticism or, you know, um, constructive comments, but I didn't ask for them. And I don't, and like, who are you to just sit me down and be like, so you should do this. And she just like started spouting off things. And she's talking about how like, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly like skinny person. I rely a lot on very like graceful movements and like, you know, extensions and stuff like that. I don't really like do a lot of like ass shaking moves and stuff like that because I don't have any. Um, that's just my style. And she's like, yeah, us with like all smaller bodies need to like, you know, use more skillful moves. Not that what I just said is, is not skillful, but she used the word skillful. Like you have to be good at pole stuff if you have my body type, I guess is what her vibe was. But I'm like, who who are you? Like, are you are you a dancer? Are you a pole person? Like, there I have no context for who you are, and you're just like spouting off these things. And then she keeps like comparing herself to me, and she was a fairly um, fairly like thin petite person as well. And she's like, yeah, us like small girls got to do this, and I'm like, not that I don't agree with that. What she was saying had some truth to it, but I'm like but who are you? Like, if, if you were a dancer, I feel like there is some, you know, or if she was trying to be a dancer, I guess she could understand like, 
maybe look at someone with a similar body type versus someone with a a different body type because you might fit more if you're like what am i trying to say if she was trying to be a dancer and she was looking at me because we have similar body types she'd be like oh maybe i should dance with that style versus someone who is a lot thicker um that might not be a good style i don't, I don't it was just weird and then like she kept touching me <laughs> like i can handle some amount of touching like i get touched that's part of my job but she kept like touching my thigh and she's like oh it's so soft and i'm like okay this is getting weird and then eventually i just left <laughs> i was like i have to go to the bathroom so i just left um she wasn't didn't see, she was tipping she gave me a couple dollars just for sitting there too so i mean like that that's good um not a whole lot of people do that but she wasn't I didn't want to ask for a dance because it's been kind of a slow night and it's one of those nights where like I'd rather just not ask for any dances and she was getting kind of I don't know like the vibes were just weird I started to like get really weirded out by this girl and uh so eventually I left because <laughs> I'm like okay I've had enough of you and then I came back and then I was just kind of sitting around for a little while then I went and sat with another customer who that didn't turn into anything he like barely talked to me but I was sitting with him and we were watching the stage and then this girl who's sitting like two tables over there comes up to me and starts talking to me again and then I'm like hi I'm with a customer you know like like she's just coming up to me like we're best friends now or something it was really weird and then I guess she thought that I was like mad which I was like sort of irritated like you're not supposed to like I am with a customer let me do my job <laughs> you know and then I'm like, hi, sorry, I'm with a customer right now. And she's like, okay, goodbye. And I'm like, okay. So that was just weird. And then I guess pretty much all the other girls who had the misfortune of talking to her had like similar ish experiences. I think she was kind of drunk. Um, but yeah, that was just weird. So, so that happened. <laughs> Otherwise, tonight was pretty boring and slow. Um, like I said, it was a Wednesday, so I never really have high expectations for Wednesdays, but I made a little bit of money, but nothing crazy. But, um, anyway, I wanted to talk about my Portland trip. Um, so I've been back for like a week. Um, I went for a couple days. Um, I left on Sunday and then came back on Tuesday. And it was really good. It was um, very tiring. But, but good. I haven't done any traveling since since the pandemic started, I, th I think. Um, so it was good to get away, but I think my body like forgot how tiring it was because I was like dead when I came back. And I had a very jam-packed trip. Um, I think I mentioned, but if I haven't yet, um, I went with a friend of mine who does um, aerial stuff. So on Monday, we actually went and took a couple aerial classes together. Um, that's something that we try to do um, and hopefully a lot of other aerialists um, do um, if they have the opportunities to go to other cities and go learn from, from other instructors. So um, Monday, I'm kind of jumping into the middle of the trip, but I figure I'll talk about this part first. Um, Monday, my friend and I took two classes um, kind of back to back. Um, we had like an hour break in between, but we, we took an hour and a half class that started at noon on Monday. And then, um, so that was like, what, 12 to 1.30. Then we had another class that started at 2.30, which went for an hour. That first class was so tiring. <laughs> um, I think it was tiring in general because like, I think we at our studio were used to having a lot more like, break time and one our classes are only an hour typically and this is an hour and a half class and it was like go 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 the entire time and we are like we are exhausted there wasn't anything particularly like difficult they did in the class it was a level one class that we just dropped into um so we are both fine with the skills they were teaching but it was just like so tiring and then i think we were both just tired from the day before and the travel and so that like knocked us out pretty, pretty well. Um, and then we had another class after that. So we, we spent the hour in between, we got some snacks and we're just like resting. <laughs> and 
And then um, thankfully the second class was not nearly as tiring, but um, very informative and very fun. We both got to try some new apparatuses that we hadn't tried before, so, so it was good. And then we actually got to, um, there was an instructor who now lives in Portland and teaches Ariel down in Portland, who actually used to teach at the studio here in Spokane, where we go currently. So we got to go and see him and do like a private lesson with him. And that was really fun. Um, so that was all good. All the aerial stuff was really good. Um, but then added to that, I also worked while I was down in Portland. So I had a very jam packed trip. Um, so going back to Sunday nights, um, we left here around like 10 a.m. I think. 10, 11, everything was like, our travel time was was like one to two hours later, um, both going and coming back than we were, we were hoping, but it didn't really matter. Um, but we came in, I think we got into Portland around 5, 5.30, and then we went to a really nice place for dinner, and then I went to a club to go audition. Um, I went to Union Jacks down in Portland. Let me know in the comments below if you are familiar with Union Jacks. Um, but that's the club I decided to try out. Um, mostly just because their audition times lined up with my schedule. Honestly, that was kind of the biggest thing I was looking for. I called a bunch of clubs and just to find out like if they were open to hiring um, a traveling dancer, you know, someone who wouldn't be there like permanently. Um, and then uh, got their audition times. And a lot, of, a lot of clubs didn't have auditions on Sundays, which is understandable. Um, so thankfully, Union Jack is one of the only ones that I could go to. Um, I'm sure if I wanted to, I could probably just audition whenever, but I wanted to like kind of follow the standards of, of what all the clubs had set up. But I got there, um, we ate dinner. Um, the auditions were like from six to eight. And I got there at like 7.45, so like I was at the very, very last minute. But um, the audition was fine. I think I mentioned that I was a little bit nervous about how that whole process worked, just because I hadn't done it before. I wasn't necessarily nervous about like whether they like me or not, but like the whole premise of an audition is that they can say no. And so that's, I think it's normal to be a bit nervous about that. People were commenting like, oh, you shouldn't be nervous. And it wasn't like, like I was scared. It was just that I hadn't done that before and I could be rejected, which is always a little bit, you know, like, meh. Um, but they seemed to like me. They were talking about giving me paperwork and stuff before I even actually danced. So I guess they were like, sure, you can work here. Um, I know the, I guess I talked to the bouncer first because um, he had to let me in and all that. And he, see, he was very nice, and I guess he was saying that like he reminded me of another dancer. So, because he was like, have you danced here before? Have you been in Portland? I'm like, no. Um, but I guess that kind of got me on the good side, because I reminded them of someone. Um, so I guess that was a good thing. But yeah, I did, um, I did a stage set, and then they had me fill out paperwork. Um, and then I worked that night. So I worked basically until close or until close. Um, so after a full day of traveling, um, I worked until 2.30 that evening slash next day morning. Um, the, the setup of this club was very different um, compared to mine. Biggest thing was that I was in Oregon, so the state laws were different and uh, there was alcohol which was different because in Washington, there's no alcohol in our clubs. Um, this club was pretty small and it was basically, um, obviously if you've been there, this will be familiar to you, but it's basically a, just a bar and there happens to be stages. And I think the biggest difference to me, besides the fact that there was a bar at all, um, was just the general like layout of the club. At home, um, at the club that I dance at, every day the it's almost like an auditorium looking place where there's a stage and like all the seats are kind of arranged around the stage if that makes sense you can go in there and like not pay attention to the stage but just the way the room is set up it's very much set up to have your attention directed to the stage if that makes sense it's very central 
um, at Union Jacks, it was kind of like the main stage was off to the side. Like if I'm sitting at the bar, right, the stage is over here, like directly like 90 degrees to my left. So I think because of that, just the atmosphere was a little bit different. That plus just, just the, the vibe was a bit different anyway. But like, it was pretty easy to sit there and not pay attention to the dancer on stage unless you were like physically looking this way or you were actually sitting at the stage itself. So that was kind of different. Um, they also had like a second stage over here, which I never went over there, but um, there was a second stage too. Um, uh, let's see, what was the differences? Um, I was expecting clubs in Portland to have spinning poles. This one didn't, <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. The poles were higher, um, at least the one on the main stage, uh, than the ones that I'm used to at my home club, but they were the same non-spinning brass poles. Um, but yeah, I was taller, so I got to climb up a bit higher. It was also, um, the stage made more sense in the, in, in the sense that the pole was actually like in the middle of the stage, um, which is how I expect stages to be. But like the one that we have at Deja Vu is weird. And the, I've talked about this before. The poles are at the very edge of the stage and there's only like a foot and a half or so of space like on, on the outside perimeter, if that makes sense. I've heard that all Deja Vus are set up that way. So if you've been to a Deja Vu, it doesn't have to be the one that I'm at. Um, but you probably know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I got to be on a pole that was actually in the center of the stage and like kind of farther back. So it felt more comfortable doing certain pole tricks and stuff. Cause you actually had like the entire like radius to work with. So that was nice. Um, other than that, let's see, I didn't do, so I worked there Sunday night. Uh, that was the day that we got there and I auditioned. Um, I didn't do any private dances. I asked for some, but people didn't really seem to be wanting them, and it didn't seem like a whole lot of people were doing them. I wasn't really watching that much, to be honest, but like, it just seemed like a slightly different vibe. Um, and maybe just because I was new there, uh, no one really seemed interested, but I did make pretty good stage money. Um, I got tipped 20s um, like four or five times, which is a lot for stage for me and my experience here. So that was nice. So I ended up, it was so, it was kind of slow cause it was a Sunday. Um, but I actually ended up making like decent money, like more than I would make at home on a Sunday, I think. Um, especially for only having done stage. Um, so that was good. Um, the, the management that I talked to seemed really nice. Um, uh, when I got like my paperwork done and all that, the the bouncer like showed me around where all the different rooms are. Um, the security seemed good. He talked about like, show me where like the panic buttons were um, and all that. So that was really nice. Um, it's always like, I mean, I hope that security is good, but like, I'm always like a bit afraid that I'm gonna like walk into a club and like, they're not going to have the dancer's best interest in mind, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, everyone was super nice. Uh, the He was bartending, I don't know if he was a manager or something as well. It was also very nice to me. Um, I ended up not act actually having to pay the normal like fee at the end of the night. Um, I think just because it was my first day and I was like happy to just stay and work till close. So he let me off um, without having to to pay the fee the first night. So yeah, it was all good. Um, only like complaints, I would say, uh, was just, like I said, the layout was kind of weird, but that was, just, that was just a difference between my club at home and that one. That's not necessarily like a critique or anything. Um, also the bar stools were really uncomfortable. <laughs> so I'd sit at the bar occasionally, but like it would start to hurt my butt because they were like wooden you know, and they weren't like the form fitting kind of, maybe they were, but they, they weren't comfortable to me. So it wasn't like the most comfortable place to be. Um, I ended up working at the same club Monday night as well. Um, basically because uh, they asked me Sunday night, they were like, hey, we need someone on the schedule. Do you want to come back tomorrow? And I'm like, sure, why not? <laughs> um, it may have been 
better for my trip in general to to have gone to a different club um monday night just because i was only there for a couple of days and maybe i should have like expanded my um places that i was trying out but but it happened to work with my schedule i ended up working like the mid shift monday night so that was like a 6 to 12 midnight um shift so not all the way till close um, that just like, actually ended up being good for me because it, it just lined up with my schedule. Like we got done with the aerial stuff and then had some food and then I went to work later that night. And then because I was already kind of tired, I was kind of glad to um, uh, actually get done a bit earlier. So it ended up being good. Monday night was a lot slower. I didn't get nearly as much money, but um, it was a Monday. I didn't really have high expectations and everyone was kind of saying that like Monday, were, Monday was going to be slow anyway. So that's all good. Um, but yeah, let's see. I ended up uh, talking to a few dancers down there. Everyone was really nice. Um, uh, I got complimented a lot by the other dancers. That's, that's always a good feeling. Um, I got told that I'll, I'd probably do really well in Portland just because of like my look. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that I stand out here, um, but I think I blend in a lot more in Portland just because of the whole like alternative-ish look. Um, so because of that, I was told I could probably do pretty well or I would, I would fit in well in a lot of Portland clubs. Um, although one dancer did tell me that like they had had uh, decent luck in like the Midwest or somewhere where this type of look is unusual. Um, so that'll be exciting for future travel endeavors um, to go somewhere where I look really different, where like no one has weird colored hair or tattoos. Um, I'm excited to try that someday to see if like that is good for me or because I look really different or if I get turned down because I look too odd, you know. Um, but that was kind of an interesting little tidbit that I that I learned. Um, but yeah, uh, was that it? Uh, my friend who I traveled with actually came in um, Monday night right as I was I was getting done. Um, I was actually doing my very very last stage set, and um, she came in right when I was like just on stage. So I was like, come here, come here, come here. And she had never been in a strip club before, and uh, that was really fun. I got to kind of like show her around and be like, this is what it is. It's just a bar, and there's people dancing, and they happen to be naked. That's kind of all it is. Um, um, but yeah, I, I liked it. Um, I would definitely consider hitting up that club again if I am in the Portland area. I'm in their list and stuff, and they just told me that if I'm back in town, I just need to... Um, text the the manager I'm assuming it was someone who wasn't there at the time when I was there but I, I received this person's phone number um, so I guess I need to just text them to get myself on the schedule um, if I were to go back down there which hopefully I will in the not too distant future I'm not exactly sure um, but I definitely want to check out the other clubs down there as well um, there was I was talking to one dancer while I was at Union Jack's about um, another club, which I meant to check out. Uh, it's, it's called Club Rouge, which is actually owned by the same people as Deja Vu, I think. Um, and so I was like, oh, that might be a nice place to work. But this other dancer said that she tried out there and that she got turned away be because she had too many tattoos or something. And apparently the person who was like inspecting her was like, oh, we're not hiring people with tattoos anymore or at that time. So I don't know if I would have gotten turned down for the same reason. I, I don't know. Like, obviously, I can't base my experience off of this other girl's experience. But that was kind of weird to hear, especially in Portland. <laughs> like, like, everyone has tattoos. Whatever. Um, but that is, is still a club that I would like to check out at some point. Um, yeah. I don't remember if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Oh, so I think that's that, that's it for the club experience. Um, yeah, like I said, I think I would definitely go back to Union Jack because I think it was really cute. It's kind of a small place, very like intimate feeling, but like I said, the vibe was really nice. Um, and I've, I'm already on like the list of 
I'm already hired there, so might as well go back if I have the have the chance to. I was gonna say, <laughs> so we came back on Tuesday. Um, uh, my friend and I spent the day like doing some shopping and just like not really touristy things, but like. We didn't have anything on the agenda for Tuesday, so we wanted to spend as much time as we could down there before we drove back home. Um, we, did, we did a little bit of shopping, um, had some food. Um, we found a really nice like little tea place, which was really cute. Um, I love tea. And uh, it, it's kind of like rainy while we were down there. And um, we found this little tea shop that was like, kind of in someone's apartment, it seemed like, but it was like upstairs and we sat like by this window and it was raining outside. It was very cozy and it was really cute. Um, oh, I almost lost my phone. That was fun. That was a momentarily, momentary heart attack, <laughs> but I found it, obviously I'm filming on it now and I haven't been like freaking out. Um, but I ended up like leaving my phone in the bathroom of the tea place and then we went down the street for like dinner and then I'm like, I'm like rummaging through my bag. I'm like, shit, where's my phone? Cause I knew this would happen. And I'm like, I'm traveling. I need my phone. <laughs> um, luckily it was just in the tea place. It was just down, down the, you know, down the street. And what was funny, and let me know if this experience has happened to you. What was funny was I was in the bathroom and I'm like, I don't know, like fixing my hair or whatever. And I remember, setting my phone on like this cabinet thing and the thought ran through my mind of I could accidentally leave this here and then I did <laughs> but I remember distinctly thinking that like I could very easily forget that I set my phone down right here and then lo and behold I did but thankfully they someone found it I just had to run back so it, it was only gone for like 15 minutes or something but that's always scary right especially being in a different city and you're like, well, hmm. Um, but yeah, we had tea, then we got some Mexican food for dinner and then we got some ice cream um, and it was all like right in the same block, which was really nice. And then, so we meant to leave to head home by like 6 p.m. or so, um, uh, but we didn't end up leaving until like eight. <laughs> and then I had my, fr I, we took my car uh, down there but I had my friend drive back um, cause I was like super tired and like, I wear contacts and some days contacts don't agree with my eyes and I was having issues with them like all day Tuesday. Luckily we we're just hanging out so it didn't like really matter. But I was like, I, I can't, I can't drive. Um, I eventually just, I, before we went home, I actually ended up just taking them out, putting my glasses on anyway, so I could have driven, but I had my friend drive, um, and she also ha had offered as well. Um, although I feel kind of bad because like it was rainy and it was an unfamiliar car and like the weather wasn't good. And I'm like, here you go, new experience, drive this unfamiliar car in like bad weather in an un unfamiliar city, but she handled it very well. If you're watching this. You handled it very well, Emily, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, but, so we're driving home, right? And we're just like, you know, I have like Google Maps up on my, my phone. We're just like driving along and we're going like the fastest route that it put us on, right? And there's like four and a half hours or so left in the drive. We hadn't gotten that far out of Portland. And something was like, caused Google to reroute us um, a different direction. And it added another hour to the drive home. <laughs> and we're like, are you serious? Uh, I don't know what it was. Um, it ended up being fine. But like, you know, Google's like, hey, we have to reroute you because there's some kind of like blockage or something on this freeway or, or something. And so we ended up having to take this other route, which would have been slower. And so like, I'm reading this thing that said, four and a half hours left. Then it was like five and a half hours left and you've already been driving for an hour. And we're like, oh my God, seriously? Cause we already had left way later than we had intended to. Um, <laughs> so that was fun. Cause we're both exhausted at this point. And we're like, are you serious? We're gonna have another hour on the road. It all ended up being fine. I don't know what it was, but um, eventually something put us back onto a faster route. So we ended up coming back at like the same time, I think, or 
not an hour later, um, but like maybe a little bit later, but not nearly as bad. But that was like getting news like that from Google Maps when you're tired and just want to go home. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating, but it all ended up being fine. Um, yeah, so we got home uh, basically, it was like 3, I think I got home at like 3 a.m. Uh, Wednesday morning. And then I ended up not working that night at home again just because I was really tired and I basically like napped all day. <laughs> um, but yeah, since then uh, I worked pretty much every other day back at home. Um, there hasn't been anything particularly exciting to talk about. It, it was a kind of slow couple days, honestly. Um, I think last Saturday night ended up being a decent night for once. Um, but overall, it's still been fairly slow here at home. Um, I was just talking to, before I left today, one of the waitresses. Um, we were standing outside by my car and we were also talking about like, just the fact that we we need more like social media and more advertising stuff done um because we just don't do it apparently i heard that we only just recently like updated the hours and stuff on like the google map listing for the club um because i guess it was saying that we were still closed which i mean the club was closed before i started working there from the pandemic and whatnot but like I've been working there for like three and a half months now and like I guess the Google listing said we were still closed and like I know I had talked to several customers who thought we were still closed so the fact that we only just changed it now it's like no wonder why we're not getting business right so I don't know we've been hiring a lot of new people too um like like not dancers like wait staff and like management and stuff and I guess we're supposed to open our day shift again soon I don't know, but like, I can't help questioning how we have the money to pay everyone that we're hiring. I'm not saying at all that we shouldn't be hiring people, but like, if we're not getting customers in, how are we hiring and aff affording to pay all these new like waitresses and bartenders and, and management and, and whatnot? It, I mean, it's, that's not my job at the club, so I don't know, but I, like, I can't help wondering like how all that's working out, so. I think we need a social media person um, or someone who's willing to like run that and do more advertising and stuff and, and promotion because we're just like not getting business and like it's not a small city, you know, <laughs> there, there could be a lot more people who come in. Um, so I know I've talked about that before. Um, I just hope it gets better because it's been really slow. So, um, Anyway, I know this has been kind of a long video, but it's been a while since I've vlogged. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Oh, this might be a different audience, but um, I just wanted to mention if any of you are into the other content I make, um, I'm still getting followers on OnlyFans, which I'm not opposed to. Like, there's still stuff on there that you can look at if you're interested, but I don't post on OnlyFans anymore. And I don't really plan to post on OnlyFans anymore. So if you are interested in my other content, please follow my Fansly. Um, you'll find links to things somewhere. <laughs> I don't know how much I can like promote stuff on YouTube because it's like naughty stuff. Um, but if you're interested in that, please follow my Fansly. There's actually stuff there. I'm getting kind of looping back to what I started with at the beginning of this video, I am getting back to posting things a little bit more consistently. But like I said, I might not be on like a strict schedule anymore. Um, I was starting to feel like I was producing stuff just to be on a schedule and not because I actually had anything to to say or to, to make. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so I think things are going to be a bit different, but you should see stuff from me relatively consistently, daily-ish. I'll just say that for now. I'm still kind of figuring it out, but uh, for those of you who follow me over there, um, hopefully that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below 
suggestions for other clubs to try out? Like, if are there any in your area that uh, you would recommend? I am open to going anywhere, not necessarily like right now, but like I'm really interested in the whole traveling thing. I'd love to like have this take me across the country um, at some point. Um, Probably not right away just because like winter's hitting soon. Although I'm, I might, I'm really tempted to go somewhere like down like Arizona or something where it's warm. Um, I know I was talking to another dancer today. We were kind of like thinking about that. Like we should go to Arizona. <laughs> um, but just in general, if, if you have uh, clubs that you like or places to avoid, um, just let me know. I'm, I'm just really interested. Um, I'm hoping that next year after, you know, winter lets up, um, that I'll be doing a lot more traveling. So we'll, we'll see about that, but okay. I'm actually going to go now. Uh, thank you for watching, um, like, and subscribe. Also, let me know, do you guys like the, the outfit videos? I, I just started filming those. Um, it's funny that they're so short, but they actually take me a long time to film because I keep like messing them up <laughs> like it's funny because it's like I try to do more shorter content and like the vlog content because like it doesn't take as long to um produce on on my end but those little outfit videos they're only a minute long but I've had to like do most of them four or five times because I can't like think of what to say or I, or I run out of time, so they actually take it longer than they seem to take. But let me know if you like those. I thought they were kind of fun. Um, and yeah, okay. Actually gonna go now. Like and subscribe if you want and haven't yet. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.